So everybody, um, we're in Producers Corner, um, ACC African American Art and Culture Complex based out in San Francisco, Fillmore, um, in partnership with Heart House University. Um, we got a good friend of mine, Tony Cruz, coming through to do a workshop today. Uh, it's going to be a very like expansive workshop. I believe he's going to start off with like playing some of his music, and then we're going to discuss some of his music and just like get into the discussion after that. Um, we'll also do introductions after that too. But um, I'm going to let Tony Cruz uh, take it from here. And, uh, let me make you a co-host. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, two, one, two. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, I can All hear you. Right. All right, cool. Yeah, my name's Tony Cruz. Um, you know, I'm I'm from Prince George's County, Maryland. I call I go by the you know the title of a sound artist, but you know I try not to to you know lock myself down to one title. You know, we we wear many hats. Like I'm a producer. I'm a songwriter, engineer at times. If um, the opportunity comes, you know, I like to do installations with sound and stuff. So, you know, I'll play, I think as a producer, you know, to keep it on topic with the, um, with what this is, you know, produ as producers, we're in the service industry. You know, we, we help artists and vocalists actualize their dreams. And sometimes we get to stand on our own two feet. So I made a like a, a real quick playlist of some artists that I've been fortunate enough to work with. And, um, you know, I'll just play a little bit of their music. And then, um, you know, if y'all have any questions about this, we can kick it off from there. Otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm down to, to, to make this fun for everyone and to um, hopefully at the end of it, we'll bring everybody a little closer to the artists that they want to be. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for that still too, so. Um, I'll just play a couple of tracks here and there. You notice it's a lot of live bass on a lot of the tracks that I do. Um, you know, I don't think um, I don't think the audio is coming through. On the, on the okay, track. cool. Let me do that. I always do this when I'm on my Zoom dates with my girl too. <laughs> Same, bro. Just trying to show her like this track I was whipping up right before the date, and then <laughs> it ain't even playing. All right, well, here we go. So. I really love this track because um, the music video is just so beautiful. Uh, name of the artist is Suge Savage. And um, she just put together clips of old black people dancing. And this song, funny enough, it was a cover of Gone Daddy Gone, but I didn't tell her that. And she just put her own spin on it and it was just, it turned out really cool. So this is that. One, one, two. Some I might need to mute. So yeah, that's a track I, um, I really like. It by Suge Savage. Here's something that I worked on. It's a live band. Um, the name of the band is um, October 71. I really love the way the drums cut through in this one. We actually recorded the drums live, but then we ran them back through a reel to reel tape deck. And it just, we just got a crazy sound for the drums. And then the songwriting is just amazing. Um, this is October 71 in Star EU. I, I, I collab a lot with these folks. Too.
wish Bandcamp had the volume button so you could, you know, fade it out. But um, yeah, I really love this band. I really love this artist. I, I do a lot of work with them. We really influence each other. Um, this is an album, I, and I produced and engineered this album. This is another album that I uh, produced and laid keys and bass lines for. And this is an awesome artist. Things are quiet. James Tillman. I actually played the keys on this and the drums and all that. That was a that was a cool project to be a part of. That was around like 2015, and um, it was also co-produced by Meryl from the Tune Yards. Yeah, that's and, wild. I didn't even know you collab with James Tillman, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we were close. He's he's done a lot of great music on his own since since we worked together. And um, actually, one of our really cool friends, Tyrus uh, Care of, he did this artwork, which was just amazing. Um, I, I wanted to um, ask you some questions about like the future acts you just played. Like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I feel like a uh, like a um, like a theme throughout a lot of your music. This like has like very like dub like kind of like um like dub esque like um, sound design. Mm -hmm. Like a lot mm -hmm. of like live effect pools and stuff. And um, like, could you talk a little bit about like your inspiration with that, or like um, even maybe going to your background um, DJing and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. So personally, where that comes from, for me, obviously, the legacy of, you know, Lee Perry, and just the great architects behind the boards. And a lot of what I do as a producer is, um, is I process the artist's vocals. Um, a lot of the times I run it through my hardware, I'm looking for my chaos later. I will run it just straight through my hardware, we record it live do a take, if, do one take and just kind of pick from there and go from there. But historically, um, where I'm from and the, from the DMV area, there's a genre of music called go-go. And, um, and, and it's always been a thing in go-go for there to be a sound man behind the board that will process the vocals of the lead, of the lead mic and would just put that thunderous delay and that crazy overdrive on it and you know the wah, 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 like like that's just that's just second nature to to so so when I do that when I process a vocalist you know and um I put that delay on it sometimes I do it during my DJ sets and I'll get into that in a bit but that's always paying homage to like Lee Perry and paying homage to all the amazing go-go bands that just do that you know it's just second nature um I guess another thing too is, you know, being behind the boards is I've always been a DJ. Probably um, I got my first turntables and mixer when I was like in middle school, seventh grade. I asked for, for Christmas if my mother could get me uh, two decks and a mixer. And, um, and, you know, like I, so I've always known how to blend tempos, how to um, weave in and out of different songs, you know, filtering one part, leaving the bass from another, low wind theory, shout out tribe. Um, that's always been been a part of me. So a, a, as I got older, um, for a while, DJing became less accessible because, you know, I'm I'm you know I don't want to date myself, but when I was really coming up, and, and I'm still coming up, um, 
they didn't have the CDJs like they do now. Now I, I learned the CDJs because if you want to DJ, you can just bring your you can just bring your thumb drive and you can rock in Berlin, which is basically what I was doing. I was just thugging off the CDJs or whatever version of the CDJs they had. But um, yeah, just learning how to DJ early and how to how to blend tempos and stuff. Um, I actually was so uh, one thing that I would recommend for all producers and artists to do is to find you know once you've got your sound and you and you and you're young and you have an audience and you might not be as confident as about your thing start a residency somewhere where you can curate the vibe for other people and um and you can bring them into your world and that's that's essentially what I was doing in like the mid to like early 2010s like I would get a residency at a bar but sometimes my controller would break. And, you know, so I'm at the mercy of the hardware. So what I learned to do, um, and this is a little gem that I'll give y'all, I just learned how to mix using virtual DJ. And I would just um, look at the waveforms and you can blend back and forth just easily like that. Like my, see my computer's crashing as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I bring it up, you know, at the mercy of the machine. It wants to up, update, but I like Virtual DJ 8. Um, I, I, I recommend that. It's just easier to set your cue points and to, and to get busy. But yeah, so so like, and I remember it was this place called Darnell's Bar. My, my controller broke one day and there was this dude behind the bar. He was slinging drinks. He was like, oh, you know, before you come in here, I usually just pull a Virtual DJ and I just hit the C to set my cue point and I just hit playing space bar and playing space bar until I get the mix right. And I was just looked over his shoulder and I was like, damn, he's hella experimental, you know? Like that to me, that to me is experimental. That is avant-garde. That is super duper progressive to be using a Hewlett Packard laptop and to be seamlessly transitioned. So I learned, you know, I learned that pretty quickly because I already knew how to mix. All he did was show me the buttons. And I just took it all from there for a long time. Even I did a set with Toro Imwa at a U Street Music Hall. And I was literally using virtual DJ in front of like 500 people, that's 1,000 actually, people. That's actually how I found out about you crazy enough. It's like when I went to go see that show. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yo, I promoted that show hard. It's crazy too, because I'm like a huge Toro Imwa fan. Like I've probably seen Toro Imwa like six times in my life. And mm -hmm. I would say Tony like definitely showed my boy Toro up that night. Like, Well, he was in DC, you know, true, true, he was in DC and true. he was actually freaking the CDJs, which I didn't really know how to, I didn't even know what they were at the time, to be honest. Like it, that came later. Um, yeah, but but it, was, it was wild, man. Mm -hmm, I played all them bootlegs that I had been working on. They, they were fresh. And you know, a lot, and a lot, and I got that gig because I had a residency at 930 Back Bar. So I was at Back Bar, you know, like once a month. And I was doing this event called Standard Ceremony, where basically um, I would get a florist to like deck out the DJ booth. And so folks would come there and it would be a sweaty basement bar, but the aroma and the fragrance of flowers would be there. They could take the flowers home with them. So I'm already setting these, you know, I subconsciously this is happening. I didn't realize what I was doing. I was just trying to be different, but I'm, I'm setting certain aesthetics and certain, uh, a certain barometer for excellence with myself and the events that I do and the music that I'm doing. So, um, you know, I, I hope I, that, that may have been a long winded way to, 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 to answer your question, but, but I yeah. That was good. Yeah, the DJing, the dub vocals, the all of that stuff, it's all it's all related. You said you and you said you ran you um something caught my, my um ear at the beginning. You said you run your vocals through a chaosolator. That's that's Yeah. I'm yeah, I, I have it somewhere. I keep that thing with me. Hold on. Sorry. Let me grab it because that this has been like the most important one of the most important instruments to find in my sound. Like I I started playing piano when I was very young, just by ear, my aunt bought me uh, a piano, an electric piano, piano, and like I learned the melody to "Jumpin' Jumpin'" by Destiny's Child, and like that was like my first foray into music. I I fucking love that, and it, you know that's an E flat minor, so it's just like all black keys, but it just meant the world when I figured that out. But 
this K oscillator, I love this. If for any artists out there, I, oh look, it's even coming apart. I don't care. Like any artists out there, I would recommend you to hop out of the, the, the DAW for a second, grab a piece of hardware and learn it inside out. That'll be the best thing that you could really do for your for your musicianship. You know, nowadays you can probably get into like modular synths, you know, and you start with that. But um, I would start with this K oscillator. This was like me and my best friend at the time. We made a band basically out of me processing his vocals through that. And it gives you four channels that you can loop on and you can you can slow the tempo down so that you can get 16 bars as opposed to eight bars. Mm -hmm. And it's all sorts of wacky in and outs that, you know, this is like my equivalent of Dillo with the MPC, you know, like I can freak this like nobody can. And I know it inside and out. I can, I could play it with my eyes closed. I can figure out what key the artist is in and I can create a drone on the fly with it. You know, I could, when I was using it regularly, I haven't been performing as much lately, so I won't I won't be as, as boastful. But um and it's got and it's got this mic and this in this input that you can trim and you can just just you can create like side chain just by abusing the trim. Like it's 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 just so much that you, that we can do in a piece of hardware and, and I, I couldn't exhaust all the possibilities of it. And this is just one instrument. So I, I, I would recommend for everybody to find the instrument that they like. And, you know, I hate to say it, read the manual. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, or, or don't read the manual and play it upside down with your eyes closed and do it like nobody else does. You know, this, the sky's the limit, but it's just something about, you know, it just takes a little SD card. You can only program like 10, you can only save like 10 tracks on it. And a lot of the time that's, that's the beauty of it is the constraint that that the hardware you know gives you and within that those those constraints constraints there's just an infinite amount of um possibilities that that we can have you know it seems it seems like it's finite but it's not it really makes it really kind of like hones in your creative ability i don't know you know what i mean yeah i, I can't believe it's falling apart like this though damn that's hella important that like having like creative limitations like yes uh, like when i'm using my sp404 sometimes i'll just like create tracks solely in my sp404 and mm -hmm. like the tracks i make that are like some of like the most experimental and like free and tracks because i wasn't like thinking like okay i'm gonna section like this this and this through the DAW and like uh, automate right here and like et exactly exactly yeah and you know and you know that you know that 404 you know what i'm saying you probably that's battery powered, right? You probably take it around, you know what I'm saying? Without the adapter, plug in, plug in the quarter inch, put your headphones in and you can get busy. You can get busy. And we living in an age where, um, this is really important to me. I don't know how we got here so quickly, but we live in an age musically where there is no physical format for it. You know, photos are still being framed but music is not being framed the way it was with cassettes no more, the way it was with mini discs. I love mini discs, you know, I love antiquated media and that might be played out, but we, you know, I think that eventually we'll reach a point where there's a physical medium for music again, but until then, you know, us as producers, songwriters, musicians, we got to keep that tradition alive and, you know, and fuck with our hardware. You know, I'm not against soft software by any means, though. You know, what I'm saying that that only enhances what you do, but it's just something about me having this X Y pad in my hand and these stickers that only I know where they came from, and it just gives me the confidence to be able to create in a way that only I can. I couldn't agree with you more on that, man. I also wanted to get into. Uh... Cause I know I know we talked about this before offline, like um, like how you really like repping um, Prince George County. And I mm -hmm. just, um, I'm like the same way. I think that like um, as a black person coming from like the South, like geography is like so important in my music. And I think it's like like um, geographical music cultures is something that's like looked over a lot in music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, for a while, I was kind of almost ashamed of like, when I was like, probably like up until like a teenager, you know, you like almost ashamed to be from the South from like, for like whatever reasons. What so, part of the South are you from? Uh, North Carolina. Oh, that's so cool, man. You know, I have a rich musical legacy. Yeah, and my Very dad. rich little brother, you know what I'm saying? Like- um, Nina Simone. I, I mean, saying, yo. <laughs> it's just wild. It's just wild. Yo, but like, but in North Carolina, everyone's just like, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get into like, like your perspective on that, like the importance of like where you came up. Yeah, um, you, you, gotta, you gotta be at peace with home. You know, if you're not at peace with home, there's always a piece of you that's gonna be longing for, uh, you know, that, that peace at home. Now, I, at one point I rebelled too, you know, about where I came from and I just figured everybody around me, they didn't know how important what I was doing was and it got full of my head and ended up, you know, making mistakes and losing very, very long standing friendships and relationships because there was something else that inside me that, that needed to be soothed. And, you know, I would say through therapy, I would recommend every black person go to therapy and every human, and especially every man go to therapy. Oh, my mom is calling me. As soon as I say therapy, my mom is calling me. <laughs> Take your meds. Um, no, no, I, I can get so, so sidetracked, but I, I, I think it's, you know, as, as, I've, as I've stepped away from home, um, I'm able to see the beauty and the brilliance in my home. And when I return, I'm returning to love. I've taken the time to, to mend some of those relationships that I strained because music will strain your relationships. I'm gonna tell you that. Music will strain your, if you were in bands and stuff with your friends, that, will, that has the potential to, to strain those relationships. Because we all, you know, especially if, 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 if you're, we're not even explicit about the, um, the terms that we are with our music, you know what I'm saying? Like, it could be band ego, things that drive you crazy, or it could be using somebody's sample on a record that does a, a million play, plays for them and your Spotify still don't get no love. You know, those kind of things can really divorce you from from your friends and, and stuff from home, but it's important to, to rep where you're from. It's important to understand the musical legacy of where you're from. And it's important to make peace with, with, with your home because, you know, you know, they say happy wife, happy life. I consider, you know, where I've come from, you know what I'm saying? I'm indebted to it forever. And as I go further and further into the rich mu musical legacy of, of I, I was born specifically in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I grew up in PG, lived in DC, in and out of DC forever. As I go deeper and deeper into that legacy, I realize ain't nothing special about me. I ain't special, you know? And, and, and then I look at some of my friends, they're so brilliant, but have no, have no, um, oh no, it says the meeting's gonna end. Is that cool? We'll figure that out if we come there. I, I have a chat that um that we could join if 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 need be. Yeah, that message never came up before. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's lock, let's lock this in because I see that it's got like a, a countdown thing happening. Um, let's see. I don't know how we could do it. I could also send a um, drop a link in here too. Okay, I guess you'll figure it out. You 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 got that. I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's just it's just so important to to understand, you know, where you're coming from, because we don't exist in a vacuum. You know what I'm saying? We don't just come out of nowhere. You know, we just talking about Toro. Imagine, imagine his idols somewhere in South Carolina, you know, that we've never heard of the folks. Now we also live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a day where you can be inspired by somebody in Egypt. You can be inspired by someone in Brazil and your parents could be from different parts of the world. And then, you know, but I, I, I do think that to some degree where you where you lay your head, you should want to contribute to that community. And you should want to be a be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? And you should always rep your friend's brands. Like this is my my boy's brand. He he is a freak with the modular sense. He makes freakish like trap whenever he feels like it. And then he makes the coolest clothes like you can't go wrong. I know we all got friends like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And that's what it is. Uh, I wanted to get into a question. Um, correct me if I'm not saying your name correctly. Is it Tazneem? Um, they may she, be on mute. Yeah, she might be on mute. But she said, um, how did you start to get comfortable and confident in your creations? Do you remember a certain point where you thought, I can extro pit extro <laughs> extrapolate? <laughs> Yeah, extra, yeah, I always have a hard time with that word. These decisions onto all of my pieces, or does it, or is it an individual process for each new idea? Okay, well, I think I want, out of that question, I would want uh, my boy KJ just um, hit me up. This is an amazing artist. Like, A, I would say this because he just hit me. I have, I have friends that breathe life into my shittiest ideas. You know, I had a, I had a support circle that when I, when I, you know, played them this eight minute track in the car, you know what I'm saying? They didn't, they didn't ask me to turn it down or to turn it off. Um, I have friends that, that supported me and that's, that's where the confidence comes from. And then also I have failed and I have failed big. I have failed big time. Um, I, you know, when my first band, not, not my first band, but one of my first, first bands, we, um, we got the opportunity to tour with the lead singer of The Strokes, Julian Casablancas. He saw us rocking in a warehouse in DC and he literally was like, okay, y'all can come on the road with us. So um, we went on the road and we did six shows. And after three shows, this is, another, this is a double-edged sword about friendships, straining relationships and music. So we did three shows. Then my friends, my closest friends, my bandmates decided they didn't want to do the tour anymore. They didn't take off of work for whatever reason. They didn't want to do the tour. So I'm sitting here on tour with a band, you know, for a band that I produced for the highest paid rock vocalist um, in, in like 2013, 2014. The Strokes was crazy. And this was just his new band. And he met us in a warehouse and he said, yo, you're a wizard. I was literally freaking the chaos later. My friend was playing guitar and he invited us on the road. We did three shows and, um, and then they decided they couldn't go. So I said, you know what? I could, I produce for this band, but I got it in myself to do my own thing. Fuck it, I'm gonna keep going on this tour. So I went, you know, we went down to Chattanooga and, um, and well, I would say before then, you know, my other friends were bringing people on that weren't part of the band. They were hopping on the tour bus with Julian and I was renting a car. I wasn't hopping in the tour bus with him, but they were doing all of the stuff. And the tour manager was like, what the fuck are y'all doing? You know, y'all haven't made it. This is three shows. You know, we show you how to do it if you want to do it. But if, if not, then, you know, we, we'll, we'll, we'll see you after the contract's up. So they didn't want to do the rest of the, sh the show. So I went by myself and there's an article <laughs> on the internet about how bad my set was. There's literally the Chattanooga newspaper, the Chattanooga daily or something. No, it wasn't Chattanooga. It was Nashville, which is a worse place to bomb at. I was in Nashville and they said, I remember like it was yesterday. I could probably find it. Um, I wasn't on, they said something like, I wasn't on the right drugs to enjoy Tony Kill. Like, <laughs> you know, like, and, th and that isn't the first time I've been out there, you know, for the longest, as a producer, you have your ambitions to, to sing and to, you know, sing the stuff that you do. And I am not the best vocalist and I hadn't figured out a way to process my vocals yet, but that didn't stop me from singing my songs. And it didn't stop people from walking out. And it didn't stop me from seeing that as I'm performing. So I've gone through those pains as a producer and as an artist and as a vocalist to the point now where I'm like, all right, you know, what's the worst that could happen? There's nothing that could happen worse that, than what I've already been exposed to. Now, since, since that's happened, I've been on amazing stages and I've prepared myself and I've, and I've rehearsed my set or I've not rehearsed my set, but I've rehearsed my process to a point where I can't, I can't go wrong. You know what I mean? So it takes, it takes, you know, some hopping out there. You know, when I was in DC, I would take my K oscillator and my distortion pedal and my mic and my iPhone and I plug it up. Pardon, pardon me. 
And I would literally play in Georgetown until somebody, you know, put money in my hat. And I sit out there for two hours and I made three bucks. You know, I, you know, that tells you that people aren't necessarily into what you're doing, you know, but they, at a certain point you get numb to it. You just kind of get used to folks walking by you and, and not looking at you and doing your best to not like, not look at you or, or, or someone saying, Hey, that sounds kind of cool. You know, maybe keep working on that. So don't be afraid to hop out there to put yourself in public. That's really, that's the key. Put yourself in public. And now that we, we've taken measures to, to limit the spread of COVID, this is the perfect time for everyone to take their 404, their chaosolator or whatever to go in public and to disrupt. You know, we, music is, we, music, the music of tomorrow can be neat and pretty and packaged, you know, for this machine of capitalism to be disseminated. It's gotta be obtuse. It's gotta be shaped, you know, different, differently. And that's the same, it's no different for design. And um, someone, someone's on, someone's um, unmuted. First, we're gonna start with seasoning our um, It's no different for, for design. It's no different for um, poetry. It's no different for programming. It's no different for, art of AI programming, you know, like it, the, it, it's no different for painting. It's no, no, no different for, for making clothes. Like the, the, the shit of tomorrow is not going to be symmetrical, neat and pretty. So go out there with your, with your instrument disrupt. And, and, you know, at, at a certain point, when you first start, you may be like saying things that are antagonizing on the mic or, you know, doing things that, that the kind of like make up for, the the shade that people are throwing you but eventually you'll pierce through it to the point where you know you're able to express yourself eloquently you're able to express your beliefs you're able to do them rhythmically you're able to see what you're about to say um four bars before you say it you know what i mean like um so it through trial and error through being embarrassed through being shunned through being told to quit through being told and through being um propped up by my community, I have gotten to the point where I don't give a fuck, you know? I, I don't care. I can hop out there, be dead wrong, say something dead wrong, and I know there's 40 people back home that got my back, you know? And my girl, my girl's still gonna love me. So it is what it is. Breathe right. life into your partner. Yo. Let's do the same for you. Yeah. It's funny that you were saying about home. Um... The article that was written in Chattanooga because I had a pretty similar experience of like the first time I really started showing my music to my friends and like this is vocal music and I'm like singing it on the tracks and they're just like they just all just like bust out like <laughs> like it's like yeah. a car full of my voice I'm just like oh man that was, yeah but at the same time it like puts you like man like I'm gonna keep doing that and then like the first time I performed live like um like everybody in, it was like at a bar, and like everybody was just like completely talking over my set. And like, I could tell just weren't into it at all. And I'm just like, but it's like those moments are like, are very important to like get over the hump of um, like the fear of performing and just putting your art out there. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, life is what you make it. You don't have to hop out there in the same clothes you wear to class every day. You know, you can wear a fucking dress like and be the flyest, you know, nonsensical artists that you want to be, you know, this is an, an extension of yourself. It's not, it's not you. This is, this is me. This is me speaking to you. But as an artist, when I press play, I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm whoever I want to be. I'm, I'm whoever I dream I can be tomorrow. And I can express that, you know, through music over, over the course of time, you know, over the course of, learning a lot of other people's music and humbling myself and learning other music because that's one way to do it. You know what I'm saying? We don't exist in a vacuum. And if we try to pretend that, then we only isolate ourselves more from than, than who we could be, you know, who, who we can become. Um, a lot of, when I was growing up and even to this day, I do exercises where I hear a song that I love and I try to play it. I try to play it or I try to reproduce it from scratch. And I, and I never can do that, but what I learned in the process is invaluable. And it's always, you know, we're in the service industry. This is something I can give now to a vocalist that I'm working with.
I like that you keep um, reiterating that, like the that we're in the service industry, because I feel like sometimes it's like artists, especially like as Western artists, um, the process of art can be so individualistic and like, I'm just trying to serve my vision. But it's like, I think that's like very powerful to think of like your art as a service that I can provide for others. I can provide for like society and my community. Mm -hmm. um, can you go more into, um, into that part of your work or aspect of your work? Oh, absolutely. I think the, the individual who asked the first question, let's make sure that, that they have the link. So if somebody knows them on Instagram or something like that, let's try to get them back in here because they seem young and um, like, you know, they would benefit from this kind of fellowship. So let's try to get them back in there. So as, uh, yeah, what, what we do as producers in my mind, you know, I mean, honestly, it's the same just for sound design, for, for other design spheres. We're doing things to make people's quality of life better. You know, how many times, you know, we can't compare ourselves to the commercial elites because there's a lot of like negative things that come with that too. You know, think about a, a record that is so destructive. Think about how many people harm themselves or get harmed you know, because this, this record aff affirms that worldview, you know? So we have to pick and choose what each sound, what each um, element that we compose, how this is gonna, um, you know, if at least I would like to do, like how is this gonna improve somebody's quality of life for the two or three minutes that they're listening to it, you know? Um, what am I referencing, you know? Like, what am I sampling? Am I sampling some, something with a low vibration that somebody can get stuck and, and depressed to, or am I, am I, am I drawn from the best, you know, artists that, that I, that have helped me in times of need, or just people that just fucking rock. And, and, and am I paying, you know, tribute to that, you know, like we, we pick and choose what we, what, what our music, um, we can't pick and choose what people do with our music, but you can make music like, it's kind of hard to do wrong to gospel music, you know? And gospel music is, is scientifically, you know, just, just designed to, with, with there's so much, it's, it's, it's just lo loaded so much. And, you know, that in each progression, you literally feel um, just the experience of the, you know, I would say the Southern black man and woman. You know, like gospel music is distilled to the point where if we play it, you will, you will damn near cry. Like, and there's, that's because the experience of the black um, woman and the black man and, you know, in, in the South where, where this kind of music was like founded is, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to it. And that's a lot, that's outside the scope of this conversation. But, um, you know, we, 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 you know, the way I, and this is, this is something that I would love to share with anybody that, that can listen. Um, another part of, you know, being of service to someone, you can communicate that in order to get the bad. You know what I'm saying? You can, you, you, we can monitor, we can monetize, not monetize, but we can kind of, we can start to foment of financial value to what we're doing if we look really close into it. So when I'm talking to folks and they want music for their Instagram, A, if it's somebody that I know or if it's somebody from home, I probably don't charge them because, um, you know, I would, love, I would much rather barter with someone, you know, like my home girl, she wanted some music for her brand and I wanted something to help my alopecia. So, you know, she knows how to how to you know resolve that, and I know how to get folks to stay on your on your on your on your ad. So um, there's a lot more to gain than you know if I were to charge her my rate. You know, um, and we can talk about rates too if y'all want to because that's a good thing to talk about. But um, well, when I'm talking to clients that I know have like have a sheerly commercial and financial um, investment in what I can do for them, then the way I phrase it is, you know, I'm helping you. What's the word? I, I, I switch it up every few months. Cause you gotta, you know, same way drum cadences change every year and a half. You can't be saying the same, sh same shit, you know, same things. 
Um, but what, one thing I say is, you know, I will help you um, establish a sonic signature for you with the same precision that you do with your visuals. How can you say no to that? How can you say no to that? Because they're coming from me for sound. That's what you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to help you establish a sonic signature with the same clarity and precision as you do your visuals. Now, how do I do that? I, I, I asked them, what are you listening to? What, what would you imagine if you had a million dollars and you could license? What would you, what would you, um, what would you put behind this ad? Okay, nine times out of 10, they don't give me no insight into the ad. So I really got to get into their head. So they'll give, I, you know, I say, give me three references. Cool, give me three references. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look at the tempo with each of those songs, right? I'm gonna look at the timbre, the instruments they're using for each three of those songs, right? And then I'm gonna kind of find the middle ground and then I'm gonna give you a couple references. Now, after I give you the references, you're gonna have to pay the deposit because now, now half of the work is done. You know what I mean? So you pay the deposit and, and then, then it's up to them. If they, if they wanna move forward, then I give them what they need. And it usually works. And if, and if not, they still gotta pay me. <laughs> they still gotta pay. You know what I mean? Because that's that's why you write contracts. How'd, um, how'd you get into um, like um, scoring films and like um, commercials and whatnot? That's a good question. I would say the first way I got into it was I said it was going to happen. I said it was going to happen. I remember it was 2015, and um, my friend Ashovo. I, I, was, I was on his couch in Chicago and I saw an ad and, um, and I said, and it was, a, it, it was a, a video that Sasha Samsonova did for Kylie Jenner. It was her and Tyga, she was dating Tyga at the time. And I said, you know what? Excuse me, I'm gonna make music for her Instagram, bro. And he was like, if that's what you wanna do, he didn't give a shit, like he, he doesn't care. <laughs> He doesn't care. And he's so inspired. Like he made this book in that same year. Like it's just, I'll talk about this later, but um, he's just someone that constantly inspires me. He said, if that's what you want to do. I said, <laughs> you know, so then, so then I followed her, you know, I followed Sasha Samsonova at the time I was working at NASA. So I'll also talk about that. So a year later, no, maybe like eight months later, Sasha Samsonova, posted something. She said, I need a score for this video I'm working on. It's top secret. Um, send me, you know, at, at your favorite producer. So I didn't, at, I DM'd her. I had just dropped the album that I was working on very much heavily. And um, I sent her a link to the album, but I sent her the link from my NASA email address. It's standing out. Th this, this taught me one thing. Representation matters. If I were to hit her, from my Gmail account, there's no way in hell she would have read it. But you see an email from Tony Walker at Tony Walker, you know, on Instagram, send an email from Tony Walker at NASA.gov, you gonna open that email. Now, whether or not I had any business sending emails from my NASA email address, hell no. You know what I'm saying? No way. You don't do that. That's soliciting. Like, Nobody from NASA gives a shit about my music though. So I, I, I get away with it and I'll talk about it too, or I don't care. But um, you know, like I, that email taught me that representation matters. So what can you do to, uh, to, to make yourself more official right now? Get an LLC, make it official. It doesn't have to be your last LLC. This could be just something you use for the next six months to communicate on, the be on behalf of yourself. And hey, it doesn't even have to be an LLC. I've never, I, I have a DBA so I can get checks as Tony Cruz. Um, it's just easier for me to, it looks more official, but I don't have a LLC, you know what I'm saying? But I, but I can get checks as my stage name, which really helps. Um, having representation matters. Talk to your friends. You know, the same friend that made the book that said, if you wanna do the Kylie Jenner stuff, we had, um, we have, and all, we, we release all of our stuff under the same name, et cetera labs. It's really cool. There's been other people in the country that use et cetera, but nobody, nobody has the distinguished nuanced sound art like we do under that name. So, you know, get with your friends and you can, and if you wanna do things with your friends, you probably wanna set a time limit 
So you don't strain and abuse your friendships. Uh, everything ain't going to be forever. Every band ain't going to last forever. Every brand ain't going to last forever. But if y'all say, hey, for the next six months, let's put our ideas together and let's call it what we want to call it. And let's communicate the way we want to communicate. And let's have folks come to us. Let's create our own space online. It don't cost for $8 to get a domain that we list our, that we list our works and we identify the service that we do. In fact, you can use the same tagline that I use for me. And then and send me an email, studio at tonycruz.com and let me know if this shit worked for you. You know, and let me know even more so, let me know if the person was pleased with the service that you rendered them. And um, th- you, you keep doing that and you, and you know, um, Tasneen, like you were saying, you're gonna find your sound. You're not only gonna find your sound, you're gonna find a way, you're gonna find a process to make music that is automatic. You know, I think of Kanye when he said, you know, making five beats a day for three summers. You think he was making five original like fucking beats from scratch? Hell no. He was using the same drums, different, just chopping the sample up different way, probably a hundred times. And you know what I'm saying? Um, no idea. Oh my God, there was something that I was that I was um that I was listening to today and um, I'm gonna share the screen and I'm gonna make sure the audio was on and I have to share this with y'all. This is what No ID, you know, No ID was Kanye's mentor and I'm a big Kanye West fan, I, I, I admit that. Um, this is something that he said is literally what I, what I would love to communicate with y'all about just having a process. He said, he says, he literally says for making the 444 album for Jay-Z. At the time, I had a process for chopping the samples. And um, I want y'all to hear it with your own ears so you know that I'm not making this stuff up and also that we don't exist in a vacuum. Kanye West does not exist in a vacuum. This was his mentor. And this is him saying something that I know that he taught him, you know, as we study the greats. And let's see if he says it. I think it's within his 50 seconds. I'm just gonna play this really quick to illustrate my point. Then at that point, I was like, oh, okay. It just takes, man, bring Emory around. Let's talk about the old days. This oh, Now, man. this I love this part too, because he's talking about rappers um, well, Jay-Z specifically, he's not going to talk about something that didn't happen. And that's the mark of a true artist, in my opinion, as a rapper, someone that is that is pulling not just from the, the fantasy realm. And, you know, you could do that, too. There's hella nerd rap that rocks. But a true rapper and a true MC is somebody that is communicating from their worldview with with truth in every single line. No filler. But let's see if he says what I what I really think he said. And so on. Oh yeah, yeah. What the guru talk? And then all those songs just start happening. So I remember the day we were just talking. He's so cool, and, country um, too. He had given me the four woman sample because I was doing this technique with the beats, and he was like, "Man, hold on." With these. You I see, like, that's exactly what I'm talking about because I was doing this technique of the beats. Because look, he don't want to waste Jay Z's time. Don't nobody have no time for you to sit down and take a motherfucking year to make a beat and to perfect it when you're working with a with an artist that is like delivering it vocally. We have to render that service to them. Because I was doing this technique with the beats. And- Come on, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. He was he he literally just said it, and you know I I was I was here. I am praying to God that I got something to impart to y'all. And as I pull from the ether this kind of stuff pops up in me, you know, this is the equivalent of sampling right here. Like he just said it, you know, I was doing the technique with the beats. So you just got permission from no ID, Kanye's mentor to use a technique to make a hundred beats tomorrow, whatever, you know, that beat that you made yesterday that you really like, that you can't really recreate, take the, you know, take the, take the chords out, keep the drums, do it a hundred times. Do it a hundred times and sell it to a hundred different people. And then maybe somewhere along, then you're going to find your, your, your way to make music. Sample yourself, chop yourself up, slow that shit down, chop it, chop it up after you just slowed it down, chop it up again. Um, Oh my God. I got an example of, of like my favorite song from the album I just did. And I sent my boy KJ who just texted me. He's like an amazing photographer now but he also makes hella beats 
Um, I will link his Instagram because he's the man. I'll actually give him his flowers. Um, and y'all go follow him and support him and tell him that that you heard True for Dare on, on the lecture. He's the GOAT. He's just doing, he's just living his life in Brooklyn right now. Last summer when I was, well, last, last summer, two summers ago, when I was living in Seattle, um, we were sending beats back and forth. And I sent him this sample of me playing it, me playing just a random kind of like Mac DeMarco type electronic thing. And he said, dog, take the drums out and send it to me. And it ended up being like the track that everybody loves from the album that I, the second most recent album that I released. So I'll play a little bit of it to show you an example of how a weird, wacky song that you make can become, can just have the entire world condensed in that. So this is that. Um, let me know if y'all can hear it. So this is fun, you know what I'm saying, by, by itself. So it's basically just like, you know, keys, a little bit of bass, and a one bar drum loop. I, I, this is something I will always say. If it's a one bar drum loop, you don't really have to quantize it. If you just wanna have one bar and then just like extend that the whole time, don't quantize it because when you play the music, when you play the music, when you play the keys and shit to it, it'll start to swing on its own. You wanna make music that swings before you add the drums. But um, if you got like a one bar loop, you don't really have to quantize it because then everything is gonna be too rigid. But, but when, you, when you have a one bar loop, but you're playing eight bars of keys and eight bars of bass and eight bars of guitar, eight bars of synth, eight bars of wacky left field acapellas from your mom's tape deck. Like that shit, it just, it just works. It's just so dope. So please producers try that, you know, later on tonight, make a one bar drum loop, loop that joint and um, play over top of it for like eight bars. But anyway, I'll play it a little, a little bit again and then I'll play you what became of it, like, it, it's nothing like what I imagined it was gonna be when I sent this to him. So he took that, took out what he wanted, and he added a very simple eight bar drum loop, and it just became the so fire, come on. My vocals too, by the way. Live bass too, on live bass, on the live bass brings everything together. Yeah, this song is explicit, so I'm sorry. Live bass. So yeah, from this to this, and you know, I could have thrown, I could have thrown that that other track away. You know, I could have been like, uh, he won't like this. But again, this is this is my friend, this is my brother, and um, this is the dude that played the bass. By the way, he's amazing. He's got a few accounts. This is his um, photography account. But um, you know, this is someone who who 
is going to affirm the ideas that I, that I, that I give to them. Not someone that's going to say, you know, and eh, you know, that's whack. He listened through that. I, I sent him that, that first version that I played with the, you know, that's kind of like a indie kind of electronic thing. And he was like, all right, I fuck with that. Take the drums out, send them to me because that's his process. If I didn't take the drums out, then he couldn't do nothing with it. Right. So, so also don't just save your tracks. Demo one, demo two, you know, poop, scoop dee dee whoop you know what I'm saying? Name them something meaningful so that the artists that you're working with, a lot of times when you, when you send it, when you, I got to cut the lights on in my crib. A lot of times when you send, send in these art, artists like beats, they're going to rap about what you name the track. So, you know what I'm saying? Be, be mindful of that. I feel like I'd be going everywhere. I, this, is, this is just the chat of my dreams though. That light's not going to work. There we go. Yo, Tony, um, Tony, could you get um talk a little bit about um like your background and like how you learned to like record yourself and like engineering? Yeah, yeah. Um, going to live shows and just seeing people do it. You know, I don't. I I really haven't. At you know, at the age I am, the amount of releases I have, I have not really for myself had a release where I was properly in the studio and in a well calibrated room. Now, when I produce for singers and I produce for rappers, I try to make sure that they have those tools at their disposal. But because my whole thing is just being nuanced and different, I just never really took that time for myself. So that recording that I just played, it was on a field recording mic, which is not the proper mic to use. Um, I threw probably a little bit of a distortion on it so that it will cut through and I EQ'd it. And, um, and that was that, you know, like I, I've, I've sat in on amazing studio sessions. I've worked with amazing engineers enough to be able to be able to um, create a sound that is uniquely my own with, with just with the materials that I have, you know, I have this four track um, mini disc recorder and I haven't gotten around to using it yet, but that's like my approach is to record myself in the hardware. And um, because when you record to a physical medium, it gives it a different sheen. You know, I was talking real early about, about running them drums through a, um, through a real to real tape deck. And what that does is it compresses it so that the loudest parts and the softest parts come together. And it also reels off a bit of that glossy uh, top end. So you get a very distinguished sound that kills with drums. You know what I mean? I think another, another big thing though about vocals and recording vocals is to know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? And cause when you know what you're saying and you know what you're talking about, you're gonna deliver it with confidence. And when you're saying something with substance, something that is going to improve humanity, you know, it, it, it kind of don't matter what you record it on because it's got some undeniable, you know, indelible truth, truth inside it. Now, truth or dare is just like a freestyle and it's, it's low key ratchet. And, but it's, it's still cool though. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I knew what the fuck I was saying because I was just, saying it in the car, you know what I'm saying? I just said it in the car a million times. I got to my, my shitty home studio and I just delivered it and I compressed the vocals and, you know, um, EQ'd them, dubbed it to a mini disc. So it all sounds glorious. And then now you got a piece of art that can't nobody emulate, you know? Um, what do you think that like um, dubbing to a, um, to a physical medium, like what, what quality do you think that gives the work? It depends on the medium. That's the cool part about it. You rip it to a CD. Um, CDs, okay, so oh, I would love to show y'all something really quickly. Oh my God. Okay, so CDs are crazy. People think of CDs as like being super duper shiny and stuff, but you they, when I was coming up, you know what I mean? Like the CDs didn't always sound clear and look clear and glossy. So like, let's say you go to iTunes, you can change the bit rate, right? And this is, this is no different than recording it to tape then. So look, I'm a, I made that, I did that. And um, 
I'm going to, I'm going to, I think you got to like, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully I can do this, convert it to MP3. So this is now, truth. oh, no, that was a different song, sorry. Um, truth or Dare, I'm trying to view it the right way. Uh, oh, Lord, give me one second, please, please, please. Truth or Dare. I just did it. One of these versions is going to be like super low bit rate and you can notice the difference. I don't think that's it. It should be this one. Oh, no, what's happening? See this? Now that's hella different from this, right? I don't know why he's playing Solange. That's, that's the clean, you know, CD quality version. This is the so so that's that that to me is a good illustration of what recording your music to a physical medium can do. Obviously, when it goes very bad, you know, because that is just a terrible that 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 bit rate with the, those drums and that drum cadence and that delivery cadence is not going to work. You know what I'm saying? But if you're playing something that, that might be a little bit more experimental, then it might be good to rip it to a tape because there's two things that happen. So your, your music is getting is going from a digital format to a physical medium, meaning that you know it's now on these, on these, on this tape right here. This is the tape. You know, this is the cassette, but this is the tape. Your music is now pressed onto this. So you get the personality of the tape and of that digital music, now it's going to have the personality of the tape. Um, um, you can bring it back and try to clean it up in a in a in a digital audio workstation, and it's going to be completely different. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have different fluctuations. Some tapes they don't they don't play right. You know what I'm saying? Like so, four bars on a tape, it's going to be going up and down, and you know, slight variations in pitch that you can then import into Logic or Ableton or what have you, or um, Audacity, and it's going to have a new personality to it. That's why I love tapes. That's why I love CDs. That's why I love mini discs. That, that's why I love reel to reels. That's why I love seven inch vinyls. That's why I love 12 inch vinyls, because it creates, and, we, and especially when you amplify that music in a space, meaning you're not listening to it on your Beats headphones. When you get when you connect the actual speaker to it, it's a different warmth and it's a different personality. You know, some of some of our music just needs to be, um, you know, demodernized just a little bit. You might like it a lot better if it you play it on the tape, and you might seem crazy to your friends. Like, I don't know. Let can I borrow a cassette tape? Here's something that I do. Oh my god, I got to do this. I got to tell y'all about this. So I I, I like to make unique cassettes for people. And I would encourage anybody in the world to do this. This is a technique that I learned when I was in Seattle last year and I just kept doing it. So I take my album, my digital ass, 196 kilobytes a second, and I put it on a tape. In this case, I use Mariah Carey's music box. Um, the way that you do that is you cover up the holes right here with tape. You just tape over it, right? Then you, you can pop this tape. This is Vangelis, Chariots of Fire. I love Vangelis. Um, Vangelis is excellent for somebody who wants to sample very lush chord progressions and very wicked, fat Juno synths. All they was using was Junos. Um, roll, rolling Juno, this is a rolling keyboard beside me. But you cover up the holes right here. And what I would do for, for this release, in particular, Max Res Default, I was in Berlin. When I did it, I, um, I made custom cassettes. So my album was 30 minutes. I recorded over the first 30 minutes or I would record for 10 minutes, fast forward a little bit. And I would hand someone a tape of Mariah Carey. And they're like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you get a little bit of Mariah Carey, but you also get my full album on it? That's just dope. And I'm not the first to do it, but I probably did it, did it the best. So that is, that is an assignment I got for y'all to find a tape. You have to tape over this and you get yourself a boom box and you connect it and you plug it and you're gonna see that you're gonna be writing over whatever. This is um, the Commodores. I got 
Anita Baker. I wanted to send y'all tapes so that y'all could try it just so you know I'm not crazy. But um, here, and another thing about that, that's the gym, is, is, I made, is I asked people to pay what they wanted. I didn't set a price. I said, you know, pay what you want. At the time I was broke, I was in Berlin and, and my, my like unemployment insurance had ran out. I got fired from my job, which is why I went to Berlin. Well, I went to Berlin because I was protesting and Seattle was fucking racist, but I love Seattle so much. I love Seattle so much. Seattle's not racist. The cops in Seattle are probably one of the worst in the country. And I was protesting there and um, I got in trouble. And I was like, man, I can't really be here no more. So, um, and I think it's important for me to communicate that to, to young folks and the folks of color so that y'all know that, you know, there are certain dangers that you are taking on when you put yourself in certain spaces, you know, a lot of folks were turning up last year and I was one of them. And I found out just how deep the surveillance capitalism game ran. You know what I'm saying? So I won't go into that because that's it's fucking trauma that I got to unpack with my, my therapist with that. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? I was out there in Berlin, I was running out of money and I did this run and it helped, it helped me eat. You know what I'm saying? Like now, you know, I'm a, I'm a computer engineer. I didn't have a very difficult time finding the job when I got back to the States. But, um, you know, this was just one way that I said I continue to distinguish myself from folks. I said, all right, I'm going to give you a unique cassette. Some folks got Mariah Carey. Some folks probably got Spice Girls. Somebody probably got, uh, um, you know, uh, I don't know, Beatles, Beatles cassette. You know, I try to buy valuable cassettes. And, but, I, but I say, you know, pay what you want. And that, that model is is single-handedly going to up in capitalism when we start supporting each other and um you know when you ask for folks to pay what they want they'll they'll pay what you think what they think it deserves some folks will do five bucks and it's okay if they think it's worth five bucks because the next person will probably do 30 and then somebody will you know do 15 and then somebody will say i can't really pay but i really want one and i give it to them for free you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it's, it's not about making money. It's, it's about eating. You know what I'm saying? And y'all are, y'all, I'm sure y'all in college and maybe fresh out of college and maybe a little, a little more out of college. You can use a little cash, you know, for, for, for what you do the best, for what you do different from nobody in the world. You do you the best way that nobody else can do. So, you know, we can, you can use this model. Um, I made them look good. I had the resources at Factory Berlin to uh, take, they gave me a photo box. So I wasn't just taking a janky picture. My, my, it, this is official, you know what I mean? Photo box is like a little box with a light, in, a high light, uh, like a powerful light inside it. So that's how I was able to make this white background. I didn't crop it. I'm not good at like Photoshop and stuff. So I had to get a really white space and the photo box allows me to do that. Um, I'll link y'all to that later. There's so much I want to talk about, but I feel like I'm talking too much and I need to listen to some of y'all music. <laughs> oh yeah, I, yeah, we can get into um, some some sharing. Um, but also, I mean, or we can keep talking, it's up to y'all. Just let me know. If y'all have questions, please put them in the chat. Yeah, I want um, um, Tazneem drop a question. Um, this is, I think this was time back to when you were um, talking about when you were recording, like your home recording process. And she said, is there anything that you consciously stay away from um, because it's a common use process or it's become like a habit in the production world? Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I try to stay away from is um, making the drums first. I make the music, I try, I try to make the music first. I try to chop the sample up first and then, and then it should, it should, it should bop, you know what I'm saying? It should, it should be good before you add the drums, for real, for real. Um, and then another thing that I want to get more into doing is just chopping up my own samples, um, chopping up my own drums, my own drum breaks, pulling from, you know, and I do that, you know, I actually got like a big sample library. On, can y'all still see my desktop? Um, yeah. Okay. I got like a, a big sample library where I got obviously, you know, certain drums when I need to work with other people like Frank Ocean kit, you know, is just because I would love to pull from Frank Ocean because he's just a brilliant artist. 
gonna because you're just trap tastic and sometimes I'm just obnoxiously ghetto. But I also got a private stash of my own stuff, you know what I'm saying, with with different that's that's from Lucy Pearl's dance tonight. Um I think that's from Tony Tony Tony. Um this is from Jodeci. You know, maybe I'll give y'all, maybe I'll um, give Jamil a link to to these to, to this stuff, and you can play with it in your own music. Now, obviously, when you're sampling from other people, you don't have the rights to do it. But I've 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 just found it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. You know, I put P Diddy on my album. I obviously didn't get that cleared. <laughs> you know what I mean? But don't let that make the song first, you know what I'm saying? I got this awesome drum break from Erica Badu. Just listen to this. For days. And then and then right here. Come on. So come on, you can make an album with just that break, for real. But 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 do the do the keys first. Put the guitar over. It, try even try to do the bass line, and then play the and then play the drums. And you'll find that you won't even need to quantize the drums. You know what I mean? It all depends on the kind of music you want to make. You know, I have, sometimes I'm producing with with vocalists, and I would that's something I recommend every producer do is to do an EP with a vocalist, even if y'all never release it. You're gonna learn so much about music from vocalists, man. Because most vocalists been singing since they kids and they've been singing in choirs and their grandma been singing to them since they were in the womb, you know what I mean? And you get an opportunity to give them a voice, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I got hella samples, I got hella drums. This is all stuff that I was chopping up. Yeah, yeah. You know, like this stuff, this stuff make, will just make or break a tune. And it's all, this is all high vibrational stuff. This is Jill Scott, Erica Badu, you know, D'Angelo, you know, and, and the folks think that like sound design, you, everybody has to be an industrial artist. Like everybody don't have to be industrial. You can do experimental sound design using the, the music that you, that you grew up with. It's just how you put it together. But speaking of industrial, I love this thing. This is a little video right here. How to make industrial music. Sometimes that's how I chop up samples. I just click wherever the fuck I want to click. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love the feature on the, I don't know if anyone here uses Logic, but like how Logic has it now where it's like, you can just like kind of like randomly choose your samples. That's like such a nice creative tool. So you're gonna have to show me that. I, you know, I'm using Logic as if it, as if it was still Logic on like, uh, OS X line computer, you know, I'm, I'm not doing nothing that's like new or different. I just, I think, I, I think what makes, separates me from other folks is, is where I'm pulling samples from and how I'm processing my, my own individual instruments. Cause I do a lot of that too. They did that real big update with the, where they pretty much like absorbed a lot of Ableton's features and stuff. And like, ever since then, they've had like a lot of like more intuitive features for sampling. I've seen the joint where you can quantize waveforms now. Like, I think that's called, you know, oh, oh my God, I have to show you all this. So, you know, you're not limited to logic and stuff when you sample. This, 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 this is the software that I use so I can pull anything on any, from any platform at any time. It's called Audio Hijack. And basically, I, I'm not gonna hit the button because it'll ruin the audio for this meeting. But if I were to just play, you know, this right now and chop it up, 
I would then have a, a MP3 in my audio hijack folder of this. So you can use this to sample from, from movies. You can use this to sample from um, literally any source, any output on your computer. And this is a really good tool to have as an artist. Um, so audio hijack. Here's one thing that I noticed and let me know if y'all peep it too. This song in particular, you can chop it on YouTube as if, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it stays in beat. And that, that is just a testament to how brilliant Jay Dilla is. But tell me, tell me if y'all peep this. It works going backwards, not forward. Come on, that's crazy. It's really like around here, because the tempo is slightly different at the beginning. See, I just did it. You don't even notice. You can we we gotta we gotta hack the world you know what i'm saying i've seen videos of q-tip with a with a vinyl you know playing a, a motherfucking like vinyl player and he's looping the sample by by touching the needle you know what i'm saying like q-tip needle sample i it's probably not even gonna be but try that oh yeah damn this is it okay so i'm not gonna play it but try it with this song Time is the donut of the heart with Jay Dilla. Just press back when it's playing. And it just, for some reason, you know, rest in peace. That I, I, don't, I don't even know how I discovered that, but please do that. And then watch this video of Q-Tip looping up the sample manually with his fucking hand. You know, we talking about being experiment. Well, there ain't nothing more experimental than that, bro. You know, I, I, they, I did a set with this girl. Um... I have to get her name because I always, uh, we have to, I just have to get her name. So I don't want to talk about it unless I have her name. Just give me one second. I, I should still have the flyer up because I'm just so pressed. And, you know, I'd be changing my Instagram up all the time. My archive stuff, if I send an email that I know my Instagram needs to look a certain way, I'll archive everything and I'll, I'll do it so that this opportunity that I'm trying to, 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 to get makes sense. Fuck. I don't have it, but I still want to talk about her. Um, you know, her, her whole set, you know, her whole performance. So it was like at this place called Studio Gaga in DC. And um, I was performing with some crazy, you know, vocalists and modular synth artists, Pat Kane, Nappy Napper, Sir EU. And before, before my set, I'm actually unarchived just so y'all can get her info. Um, before my set, there was a woman that came from out of town. Her and Kimberly, her name is Kimberly and um, Rick Weaver. Let's see if we can find them. No, see their names are so normal that like, you know, and somebody's LinkedIn just came up. So that's, that's not the vibe that, that we're going for. But, um, but, but basically her, her set, you know, we were, I, I had like my setup and I was running modular synth into live process drums, two vocalists, and it was just super duper. We called it a super group. But Kimberly's set was screaming into the needle of a vinyl player, mic to the house, and smashing glass on her face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can archive it. I can try to unarchive it really quickly. Um, but that was her set, you know, so we're, we're talking, you know, we're in a day and age where it's not just, you know, what you do on your computer that is going to distinguish you as an artist, you know, we have to take this into the streets, we have to take it into the quad, you know, we have to set up, you know, 
all you need for a sound installation is two speakers and two different two different inputs in a speaker. You can use your phone, you can use somebody else's phone, and you stand across a room, and now you have brought folks into your world. You know, there's nothing that's that's stopping you from presenting your music in this way. So I don't want you to you know feel like like you could be confined to to Spotify and the SoundCloud and and not to not to say anything about those platforms like they're important, you know, um, for accessibility and for ease of people reaching reaching you. But at the same token, you know what I mean. Um, that ain't the only way to do it. And I just unarchived her stuff. This may or may not be her, but this will be another brilliant artist if if it's not if it's not Kimberly. But Kimberly is super sweet too. She just had a baby and um, her and Rick Weaver are just the cutest. And, and then his set was just him standing on a chair performing like with the lime and the coconut for like 10 minutes. Like it was just perfect show. Um, let me see if I can find him. Let's see if I can find him. I just unarchived it. Okay, this is not Rick Weaver. Yeah, 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 this is her. <laughs> So yeah, I probably should ask for permission before I showed that, but she's sweet. I'll, I'll, I'll ask for, again. I'll ask for her forgiveness, right? What can we do? I mean, I'm, I meant the best, nothing but the best. So I'll talk to her, you know, make sure that was okay. If not, then I just won't do it again. But if so, then y'all just got a gym. You know what I mean? That Dilla joint is crazy, right? That's like one of my favorite Dilla tracks. That whole that whole album. Dog, have had you peeped that YouTube like weirdness? You know, like that's crazy. But you know, if you think about it, all you have to do is find out what tempo that song is, and then you could probably do the same thing. You know what I mean? But I don't think his was necessarily locked to the grid. His stuff was more free flowing, so it may not, you know, it may appear as if it's eighty six BPM, but it could be anything, any 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 you know interval in between that. Yep. Were you using the uh, number pad to jump around? Uh, I was just hitting the arrow key. Yeah, I, I like using the um, arrow key and like the number pad. Like that's also like a really good way to like. So I didn't know that you could use a number pad on YouTube. Yeah, you can just like find like sometimes like when I'm just like like feeling like making like a sample based track like mm -hmm. hip hop or whatever. Like I'll just like go through there and find chops like that. Just like going through a number number pad. Okay, so you taught me another way to kill it. Well, yeah, I was gonna say something else. Does anyone have any questions? Did y'all get a chance to look at that PDF? It's just more of what I'd be talking about. Which uh, I can't even believe which PDF was that, man. Th this one. This oh, okay. One. No, I didn't. Is that was that in the, was that posted in the chat or? Uh, uh maybe not. I don't think so. Okay. I you wouldn't have had a chance. Are right, is anybody at U of T? I think, so, yeah, we're pretty much fine. So um, I, I, I am. Okay, dope, dope. So I think Mark, his name is Marco, right? Yeah. I gave him three copies of it. And I, I you know, please, please y'all, you know, get them. If, if, if somebody goes and it's not there, I will send you another one. Just give me your info. Um, I, the version that I gave to U of T, I put like a transparency on the front page. Um, so it's, it's just fire, but I, I'm not sure if it's printed in color. The ones in San, in San Francisco are printed in color. Um, yeah, yeah, this, this zine is just a, basically an example, just an illustration of what I'd be talking about, pulling from different sources, you know, um, trying to reference the best source material that you can, and just trying to communicate a cohesive message, you know? Oh, and I appreciate the love. I gotta get your name with the with the awesome mic. Oh, is that me? 
Yes, yes. <laughs> How's it going? No, by the way, it. I appreciate like you got some crazy good ideas, and I, I don't know. I appreciate all the wisdom you share with us today, man. Oh, it's nothing, man. I, I wouldn't be nothing if, if I didn't pay it forward. Um, one of the folks, and, and and if you're about to say a question, cut me off real quick. But one of the guys in this magazine, um, his name is Bill Petaway. He is like one of my mentors, and I owe a lot of what I do to him. And we only did a couple studio sessions together. But, you know, what I, what I communicate, like in my long-winded version, he just says it with music. And um, he, was, he was Timbaland, well, he, he is still alive, lives in Miami, um, but he was Timbaland's guitarist and um, Timbaland sampled him for, for pretty much everything. You know what I'm saying? So there's a page in the zine dedicated to him. He also sold me my first Moog synthesizer, this bad boy. He got his name on the back, Bill P. He also produced um, Millie Vanilli. He also discovered Tony Braxton. You know, this, so we're talking 40 years of musicianship. And he is the humblest, most soft-spoken person in the world. But, but he not only in the modular sense, he played the guitar on Ride or Die, bitch, Ride or Die Check. Y'all have to notice, like, this was like one of my first records. Y'all have to know this track. And just listen to the guitar. He also played guitar on all of Justin Timberlake's albums. Um, SWV, Missy Elliott, Jenny Wine, Aaliyah, Missy Elliott. But just this guitar riff right here. Oh my God, it's to die for. And this is him, the guy that's in the zine. Wow. Come on, come on. I can't even be mad at ads. They make the world go round. So some, some I want to say is Timbaland kind of mastered sampling microtones. And you hear microtones in like Tamil music. You hear microphone, my, microtones in like, in like, you know, weird scales. And my man was playing them joints on the guitar, but Timbaland sampled them and turned them into platinum records. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I love this song so much. And Jada Kiss fighting this joint. Another thing about rappers, she's, you know, they are just they are describing a certain type of woman. You know what I'm saying? Like a ride or die chick. I like the rock Prada suits and my ass is fat. She ain't afraid to say that shit. And that's what a rapper got to do. You know, I pushed the Cadillac truck with my friends in the back. It's so lucid. It's so lucid. So if you're not working with a rapper that's lucid and you're a lucid producer, that may be your friend. You know, y'all might have to work together to get to the next level. But, you know, y'all got to figure something out because the music is, is already lucid. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to do that. We need the vocalist to be doing that, too. I need a ride or die, bitch. And and you can already hear that 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 guitar was played before the drums. You know how I can tell? Because the the drums don't come in on the one. The drums kind of come in like boom, 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 boom. So they probably had the guitar, laid that shaker. Then you can put the drums wherever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? I like the rock. And, and you know he's rapping on subject you know what i'm saying that might not be so experimental but I, I i feel like that is experimental to stay on subject to rap about a single very lucid subject for four minutes that takes mastery that takes mastery so when folks you know try to distinguish rap experimental r&b i don't like to do that i like to blend it all together 
And if someone called me an R&B producer, I'd be honored. You know what I'm saying? It's part of me. Someone called me a, you know, a whatever. Then you can call me whatever. I don't care. I'm not bound to whatever label. I take whatever y'all call me. You know, Bill, Bill, the same dude that played the guitar on that track, he gave me a sample that I use on pretty much every high-end fashion sound design thing that I do. And, um, and I really used it here for this London Fashion Week thing. Um, but he had basically a, a bunch of samples. He had what he expressed to me, he had a modular synth and it had um, some kind of recordings on it. He told me he had a year's worth of recordings on this synth, a year's worth of audio. And, and these were like vocal phrases. These were like, you know, radio shows enough to last a fucking year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't even know what to say, but I'm just, I just, I'm just pressed. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is crazy. And he gets so, so I was listening to him go through stuff and I was like, Bill, can I record this? He's like, yeah, I don't care. I didn't make it, you know? So, so I, I recorded him for two minutes. That two minutes I've used in every project that I've probably ever done and got paid for. And, you know, I tell him, you know, and he don't want, he don't even want a buck for it. Probably because he's got, you know, Timberland money coming in, you know, to this day, but he don't, he don't want my money. He's the type of cat that, you know, that would probably still pay for my, my custom, you know, Mariah Carey cassette tape. This one is kind of loud. I didn't mix it really well. But I did this for Lush London Fashion Week last year. It's basically an interactive website and y'all are welcome to go there at your own leisure. I did all the sound um, and they, they shot this in, I don't know where they were, LA and China and London. And I came up with the different, every, all these different motifs. Yeah, there's like 32 slides. I won't go through all of it, but um, yes, but look, there's there's nothing to stopping you from hooking up with your friend and doing a limited edition EP for five or six, you know, articles of clothing that they make and making a website for it and saying, can't nobody have it. That's how you make, you know, that's how you raise your value. You just say, nobody can have this. Everybody's like, why not? Then, then you got them. Not to reduce it, but you know what I mean. Take all of this with a grain of salt, obviously. I don't, I don't make the rules. I just, you know. <laughs> hey, can you um, go a little bit into your, um, if you want, um, go into your like background in like, oh, like working for NASA and like computer engineering. I think it's really dope how like, like um, your work kind of exists at the intersection of like, um, like art and technology and science and like to me, like art, technology, and science are like arbitrary barriers that like people just made up because like there's art and science, there's science and art and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like, what's your perspective on like just being a creative existing at the intersection? Um, one thing that I do the best is is not the best, but I, the best that I can do is I try to employ all the resources that I have. So when I when I when I first started working for NASA, it was actually my bandmate who got me in my foot in the door as a contractor. Um, I once I got my foot in the door, I learned everything I could in the job, and I slowly progressed from a tech to um, to a lead deployment tech, just basically refreshing hardware, software, um, making sure data migrations go straight. Then I became a, a systems administrator, so I'm now managing a fleet for a small project, the, um, 
actually the satellite that I worked for is in is in um is in geosynchronous rotation right now, but I was just supporting the engineers that did that. So I'm just managing their hardware, making sure that their data is secure, making sure that all the security requirements were um, being deployed to these machines. And then, um, you know, I just took that to the top. Now I work for Abercrombie doing the same thing, but it's just a little bit higher. Now I work as a, as a, as a corporate engineer, um, engineering the future of the Max for their for their corporate office here in Columbus, Ohio. And that's why I'm here in Ohio. Um, but but one thing that I always do with my jobs, and I haven't done this with Abercrombie, except I'm using the um, Creative Cloud license to like use InDesign, but I use all of the resources that I can where I am. So while I was at NASA, I was doing field recordings of the different calibrated rooms. You know what I'm saying? I was I was talking to, the engineers that work there, there's number one pinball repairman in the world and talking to him about um, making additions to his car, you know, like I'm just soaking up everything around me so that I, I become this living collage of the people that I admire and the people that I look up to and the people that I want to, you know, render the best service that I can as a, as a technician, as a, as a system admin, as a computer engineer. I'm rendering a service to my end users. You know what I'm saying? Um, so needless to say, um, just because they employ me, I feel as a black man uh, that I have been given access to all of the resources and I'm going to leverage them. So I would print on the printers. I would make my, my posters there. I wouldn't post them up on campus. I may post some random weird thing that nobody knows is me on campus, but um, I would take that stuff and I would, I would leverage all of the knowledge and all of the resources that I can to affect the change that I want in the world. You know what I mean? And I think, I think that um, as students, y'all got, you're paying to be there. So you have to use every resource that you have. That means take photo shoots in every nook and cranny, videotape on, on handheld cameras, or you can use your iPhone and freak it. Um, you know, meet and talk to your professors and get them to answer the questions that you want. Do well in the classes, but get them to answer the questions that you want. And if they don't have the answers, come to a workshop that Jamil is hosting. You know what I mean? Participate in it. Take your hardware out in the middle of campus and play and decide, hey, today, five people are going to ignore me. And go out there and meet your goal. And, and you might have four people ignore you and one person share their Insta with you and, and you got a bandmate, you know what I mean? Um, don't just use college for, for like the, the partying and drinking and stuff. In fact, don't, don't do that, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you're gonna do what you want anyway, but uh, don't get hooked on drugs and alcohol as Frank Ocean's mama said in his album. It just makes you sluggish and it makes you uh, less, less than that person you were growing up in your hometown to bring it full circle. You know what I'm saying? That's the part, that's the person that people want to see flourish. They don't want to see some new, new person flourish. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you come to terms with your gender identity and your sexuality, of course, that's going to change, but you can embody that in your music too. At the core, you will still be, I will still be that, that boy that was dubbing and one mixtapes and selling, you know what I'm saying? And, and just giving them away. I, I was never somebody that could really sell a lot of stuff. So I give a lot of shit away, you know what I'm saying? And, and that has helped me stay true to who I am so that when I go home, I'm at peace. And was, of course, there's people I fought back home and people that, you know, when you fight somebody, you might know them more intimately than you know your friend. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I would love to break bread with everybody that, that I, you know, that I affected positively and that I, you know, might have been in a, the oblivion of pleasure and wine and, and rubbed the wrong way. You know, I, I, th I think it's important to come to grips. I, and I have done that for the most part, but, um, you know, th th relationships could always be better, you know, but I'm also finding myself, my partner lives in Toronto. That's why I'm there all the time. And I'm, I, I'm, I love, I love, I love how God, you know, you know, in whatever way, shape or form she may be, um, 
I love how this opportunity came to me through you, um, through God, because this is just an opportunity for me to kind of lay a foundation in a place that I would love to embrace me and for me to call home, right? That's, that's beautiful, but yeah, I, I feel the same way. I like, um, even though I'm back in San Francisco now, I'm definitely, definitely plotting my way back to how I'm gonna get back to um, Toronto or Montreal. Oh, damn, you live there too? I visited there, I never lived there though. You should, so when I'm there, you know, you got a home with me. I'm working on it, the citizenship is crazy. I thought it was gonna be, you know, um, the wild thing. So, you know, I because the borders have, the restrictions have loosened up. I've been able to see my partner more often, which is great because we were just kind of, you know, people say they're working from home. It's like we was dating for home, <laughs> from home for like the, a damn year during COVID. But, um, you know, I'm looking at different different spots out there, you know, like I don't really know the neighborhoods too much, but but I'm, I'm thinking of some places, you know, we stayed in Hamilton for a little bit. That's like not my speed. Um, I really like Hamilton. I like, I like the vintage that they got out there. But it's just, I like Toronto, you know what I'm saying? I like looking at the, the CN Tower and I like staying in a high rise that like you can't see more than a mile from. That to me, that was so inspiring. Like I was there like last week and I was, we was chilling in the crib and, you know, I could, I could see the lights from the CN Tower, but I couldn't really see it. But it was like this, this crazy shade of like purple and white and gradient. And then she take bomb pictures. She was taking pictures of me. Man, come on. That's, a, that's all I want. And, and a rock out, you know, you might catch me on Queen West with a speaker, you know, playing some some video from Kimberly and Rick Weaver, you know, who knows? Yo. Yeah. But um, I wanted to, um, so um, Tasneem has a um, question and uh, also um, we're going to get into some music sharing. If people want to share some music, if you want to yeah. yeah, get some feedback on some tracks played. And we can go as long as we want to, you know what I'm saying? It's only a handful of folks in here. So if everybody want to come and play something, everybody should be able to. We had a little break in between. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's not be all night because then it gets played out. But let's, 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 let's you know, keep it rolling. Because this is honestly, I, I really, y'all are doing me so, so much to, to be able to realize that I can articulate, you know, my experience and my vision clearly. So this is, helps a lot for me too. Yeah. Definitely. So um, Tasneem said um, she saw a line on your desktop that said to listen to my work is to see who I am. And um, she said, touching on what you said about saying true to yourself, were you ever afraid of putting so much of your soul out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, there was a long time where I was putting half of my soul out there, though, and I wasn't getting no results. You know, um, you know, I try to be transparent just because I've, I've spent times where I've, I'm, I've been so down and, you know, I've been clinically diagnosed bipolar and depressed, you know, so I'm, I'm dealing with that. And, um, but, but, you know, I realized when I was drinking and stuff and smoking and, you know, the stuff that everybody does, um, I thought it was bringing me closer to myself, but it was taking me further and further away. And I was getting mixed results and I was pissing people off. And, and I was also doing a lot of fly shit too. You know what I'm saying? I was all, it's not, it's not all bad. You know, there's nothing is, is just good or bad. I was making some okay music, you know, I was making, but I wasn't taking the time to, to place things exactly where I wanted them to be. And I wasn't able to really communicate my truths because I, I thought I had to be outside of myself to be myself. So being sober, has, um, you know, you know, and it's one day at a time being sober has really brought me closer to myself and brought me closer to the bag in a way that only God, whatever form she may be, um, has could, could, could provide to me, you know, like, like, it's crazy. It's crazy, though, once I got out of my own way, and um, also in a loving relationship, that will nurture you and, and that will, and, and, and that, and that can be a friendship and that can be business partnerships with limitations. And that can be a job that you love. And that can be also be a person that you invest emotionally in, but that, that stuff helps to chip away at that shell. And to, to, so that, you know, at the end of the day, 
I got I got somebody that that knows where I'm coming from. Also, being in touch with your folks at home because you're always going to speak like them, and they know they just know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Um, it all it's it all it's all it nothing. That's why th these lines between experimental and rap specifically that you know I, I'm not against it. It helps, but it serves capitalism more than it serves the medium. You know to for things to be hegemonic and to be able to put in places but my album is i don't know what i fucking categorized it as on apple music it don't matter you know like uh, i i care about the tapes that i hand to people the cds that i hand to people and the cds that i get from people and the, and the merch that i buy from people and like that's some of my favorite thing to do is buy like cool band tees like that's just fun that's just fun but yeah you know like um um, having loving relationships, having friends that affirm you, also having friends that challenge you and friends that don't affirm you. They can still be your friends if they don't get it, but you have to realize very quickly and not take it personally because they can benefit you in so many other ways, but don't really get sonically where you are headed. Um, and we're creating for tomorrow, not for yesterday. So don't, don't be, don't judge people too hard that, um, that don't quite see the vision because they may have a whole nother aspect of life that you can learn from and that can make you even, even closer to the artist that you wanna be. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, can you, um, actually let's take like a five minute um, break and uh, uh, Tony, if you want to play a track, we'll take like a five minute intermission. And um, then when we come back, I don't know if you guys can hear me up in the elevator. Can you guys hear me now? It's like six inch thick doors and they can turn the room sideways. They have that. <laughs> Yo, can, you, <laughs> can you hear me now, y'all? You got yeah. right, cool. um, So yeah, uh, yeah, we took like a five minute break. Um, Tony, if you want to play a track. Um, oh, heck yeah. yeah. I'll, um, I'll play some some stuff. Dope. And then we'll just um share some music when we get back. Let me see what I want to play. Uh, I'll play a sample and then I'll I'll play how I I'll, I'll show you how I flipped it. All right, bet. Give me a sec. I'll get there. This one brought my friend to tears when he was on shrooms. I wasn't on shrooms, but he was, and it brought him to tears. And then he and then he helped show me that tape technique. So that that goes to show you, you know what I'm saying? We 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 make these opportunities for all, for each other. If you get anything out of life, you got to put up with the talk. I actually like this one better. I did it twice in my album.
I'll talk about this one, this one real quick. Can y'all hear me? That for this sample, so I played the sample that I played before. To make this, I processed the song and I slowed it down slightly. And then I played it, I played it playing a little bit slower than the original tempo and process, but I also played it on another channel on Virtual DJ um, twice as fast. So the song is actually playing twice. It's going around twice in one on, on one version and then it's going around at the same speed. So it has this crazy effect. And um, I, I just wanted to share that. You can kind of hear it. Yeah, that one's that one's really special to me. So yeah, that's just like a technique that you can try. Just play something at like 70 BPM and then play something at like 140 BPM or 210 BPM. If it's at 210 BPM, it should go around kind of like three times, three, like three revolutions where the one over 70 will go. I guess that's kind of that that could have been an answer to my question about using kind of like the engineering background and math and stuff to make cool music. And I'll play one more song. This is a song that I made in 2016 that um, only has eight views because I take it down and put it up every other year, so. Like just glossy over the top, you hear my friends playing some modular synth, and I just thought that was the perfect coup de gras to this song. Like a little teeny bit over the top. Live bass, and then I played the drums, and my other boy played the keys. It came up with the original percussion. So 
yeah. It's funny, like I've become the the grown up that I that I was asking to feed to the vultures, you know what I'm saying? But time does that to everybody, you know? Not a, and another thing is not everybody makes it too. So, you know, not to put a somber thing over it, but death is as mar as as much a part of reality and life as life is. So um we should, you know, we should live as if, you know, tomorrow's not promised and 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 you know, we, we, we can affect a lot of a lot more change than than we think. So yeah, when I was writing that, I never imagined I'd be coming and growing up to to be fed to vulture, but you know, soon I gotta go too. You know, I just hope I pass on that good stuff and and I have a good vibe like my man Bill Padaway does. And you know, and y'all come visit me, you know, and I'm listening to y'all stuff and asking y'all questions. So yeah, I don't know. Thank you.